Good morning, YouTube. It's uh, 3.40... 3.40 a.m. on this gorgeous Friday morning. Today, for way too early for explanations, our topic is... Uh, this is actually an update on the, on the orbiting comets or landing on comets. Um, so yeah, let's get going. Way too early for that Higgs chromosome to space the electrons light. The magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors, radiation, are mathematics, a solution, asteroid. What am I doing up? So, um, a friend of mine at work, um, the other day asked me, hey, did you hear about the, the comet lander? Uh, it started sniffing stuff, and, and I was like, what? No, I didn't hear about that. So, I looked into the articles. Um, so, just, just to recap, uh, 10 years ago, we launched a, a probe. Um, it it uh, rendezvoused with the comet earlier this year and started doing uh, orbits and whatnot and scans. Uh, last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, the orbiter sent a lander. It took seven hours to descend onto the comet, and we landed. First time we ever landed on a comet. So now, um, but uh, it turns out that there were a couple failures on the lander. So the landing engines did not uh, start up, um, and the anchoring harpoons had a failure as well. So what happens when you don't have appropriate thrust and appropriate anchorage? Uh, your lander starts bouncing and so it started bouncing on the surface it had two bounces I think and it landed somewhere that um, they totally did not anticipate at all um, so originally they they had a battery on board uh, to do about 60 or so hours and they had these uh, solar panels to uh, to recharge the batteries well they landed in an area that was sort of up against a cliff face um, and so they're they're in the shadow <laughs> so so they went through their 60 hours and then now they can't recharge and and so they scrambled for their first 60 hours or so uh, to try to get as much data as they could uh, aside from the thrusters and the harpoon all the all the measuring uh, devices uh, were working just fine I guess um, so they deployed their drill and, to try and get samples. Uh, they took uh, readings of the air. They have a device that can sniff um, compounds in the air. They had a hammer uh, to try and detect um, uh, how hard the surface was. <sighs> you guys had, they had about 10 different instruments. Um, they were all working. They didn't all get readings, though. And the data is still pouring in. They're still uh, trying to process that data now that the battery is dead. So, a um, couple of findings already. One, the surface is harder than they anticipated. Uh, which, you know, they comets, because of, you know, up until now, most of the time when we see a comet, we, well, when we first detected a comet, we saw that tail. Um, and then, as the years have gone by, the decades have gone by, we've we've been able to see it better with our telescopes. That tail is a result of uh, as it approaches the sun, uh, the comet heats up and and the contents of the comet start spewing off, and the solar wind carries that away, and so that's why the tail of the comet is always opposite the sun. Uh, when it goes around the sun, the comet actually uh, moves into the comet. So it sort of chases a tail, uh, which is kind of fun. And so because of that, we've, we've always kind of thought that uh, the comet surface isn't that solid. It's not that, um, it's not as compact. Well, we were wrong. So uh, we got the lander up there and the hammer did its thing and um, the surface is harder than we thought it was. So it's always exciting to find uh, new information, uh, information that sort of changes the way we think of things. Um, so, uh, and then we have a, a sniffer, uh, it's a molecule detector, really, 
uh, and they have detected uh, they're calling it organic compounds they won't say what it is yet uh, again they're still processing their data um, but uh, this is significant because we've always wondered where the organic compounds on earth came from if um, you know if they were from uh, massive stars that blew up um, because we know that you know heavier metals like iron uh, and whatnot come from the, those bigger stars uh, but the compound molecules uh, we kind of figured that, that they sort of built themselves together here on Earth. Um, and if there are organics on comets, well then we know that the comet is probably the source of our organic compounds. Um, we always kind of thought that the water from from Earth came from from numerous comet um, uh, bombardments because um, we know that comets are mostly ice and if it's true that organic compounds are on these comets then maybe that's probably the source of organics as well. So very exciting stuff. Um, um, our complex molecules here on Earth are probably from space. So the next question would be, um, where did the comets get them? Uh, <laughs> so we we normally think that comets were formed around the same time that the solar system was formed. It's they're sort of the um, the the leftovers, so to speak, of what don't get formed up into planets. So. Uh, little tidbits of information that sort of explode in the ideas uh, that we have about uh, where our planet came from and where the elements on our planet come from. Uh, so what else can we say about this lander? Um, so it's not really anchored in. It, it is sort of against this cliff uh, and it's in the shadow so it's not collecting uh, sun rays to charge its battery. They're hoping that the comet will rotate uh, to put the solar panels into direct sunlight so that we can charge the battery. Uh, they don't know if it will happen for sure, but if it does, then they can get more energy, do more experiments. Um, oh, I did say uh, they had the drill go down and come back up, but then they tried to take readings of whatever the drill collected and there was nothing there. So uh, they're trying to figure out if their, you know, the orientation of, of their lander, it's not flat, um, if it's on an edge and the drill didn't actually get to anything, then maybe that's an issue. Um, lastly, uh, so, you know, the, the, the anchors didn't deploy, so it, how secure is this thing on the surface? Um, as it approaches the sun, the comet's going to warm up. We know that. As it warms up, it's going to start spewing matter. We know that. Uh, so I think the next thing to see here is um, does does all that so so here's 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 one of the hopes is that if if the comet gets close to the sun and it starts spewing off matter does that you know the cliff that it's that the lander is up against does that start to go away and does that allow sunlight as well uh, so the, it could rotate into the sun or matter could start coming off the comet to allow sun. Uh, the issue with that is, well, and, and then if, if that happens then we can scan all the stuff leaving the comet and it's just another opportunity to scan stuff, but if all of that is leaving the comet there's a chance that it'll take the lander with it. Um, uh, and I, I think, personally I think that's what's going to happen, but that's not a loss either. If, if the lander is off the comet uh, as long as the the material that's spewing off the comet isn't too thick, we should be able to get solar rays there too uh, to charge up the battery. And then what you have is you have a lander in this cloud of stuff, and maybe the cloud is actually easier to scan. So we'll have to look for that as well. As, it, as we approach the sun, does the lander come off the comet because we're not anchored down? Even if we were anchored down, because stuff is coming off the comet, we might come off the comet anyway. Uh, you know, it's not like you anchor all the way through the comet. Our harpoons aren't aren't that big. Um, so there you go. There, there, there's comet lander update. Um, exciting news. Little tidbits of news as data pours through, pour, uh, comes out, and the scientists pour through the data. We'll probably find out more stuff, but but those were the the immediate discoveries so far. I gotta go get to work. You gotta go do whatever it is you do. Um, 
yeah, have a good weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. Thank you for watching another episode of Way Too Early for Explanations. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button down here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll post links at the bottom of the description field. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do so by clicking on the subscribe button around here. If you want to get to my channel to see more videos, you can click on the link to Way Too Early for Explanations, or you can click on the eye chart that shows up in the upper right hand corner. Every morning I try to kick out more videos. Um, so stay tuned and come on back if you want to observe more early morning technobabble. Thanks again.